How about being able to look at a typical year of the Franciscans of life? It is a simple life of prayer, penance, and joy. In January, postulants enter residence and take over basic housekeeping and the regular prayer of the Roman Franciscan breviary. They also help make breakfast. We rent the place of our living and sometimes we face the ordinary challenges of maintenance. With the help of Divine Providence, we always take good care of our community houses. We freely proclaim the Gospel of Life to the voiceless. Part of this endeavor includes publishing articles. It is always a great joy when a brother becomes a novice. Friends and family attend his investiture and hear for the first time his new name as revealed by the superior. Some of our brothers are college students. They maintain a friendly collaboration with campus ministry, supporting the promotion of the sanctity of human life on campus. We are also close in spirit to friends from other countries. If we cannot visit them, we certainly support their pro-life effort with our prayers as well as with our educational material. Locally, we work with Respect Life Ministry, paying special attention to fathers. We founded Project Joseph, a joint venture with Respect Life to provide mentoring for dads in crisis pregnancies. We run workshops for volunteers who run this unique program rooted in Franciscan spirituality. Some of our brothers are mentors, while others provide ongoing formation for the volunteers. Fathers, husbands, and single men wishing to marry can also join us as extern brothers, men who are in the world but are not of the world. They too enter a process of formation, but they do not live in community or make vows. Prayer is the first and most important of our activities. The season of Lent is a particularly intense time of prayer and atonement for the culture of death. The God of all consolation sometimes surprises us with tokens of appreciation, such as embroidered linens from the mother of one of our brothers. Our Holy Father St. Francis loved nature. At the mother house we have two adorable pets, one of them being Tasha, a rescued Poggle. She is very tender, but very stubborn, just like some of our brothers. Then we also have Max, a very athletic rat terrier. He has some very unique sleeping positions. When our brothers become ill, they unite their sufferings to those of our Lord. As per our constitutions, we always try to smile when we are suffering. We also take care of one another, so that the apostolate to the voiceless may be uninterrupted. Our friends from the community also make their love felt. The weather in South Florida is often unpredictable. Some days are perfect for silence, prayer, meditation, and fraternity life, and why not the occasional nap? Our way of life is very demanding, particularly in detachment from material things and temporal honors. How else could we consecrate our lives to the service of the preborn child, the terminally ill, the immigrant poor? and every other voiceless brother of our Lord. Our excellent brothers live in the world, but they join the regular brothers at family meetings, liturgy and prayer, and in the Apostle. 
they include their families in fraternal activities and proclaim the gospel of life in many places of the secular world. Our regular brothers live in small community houses guided by their superior. They profess the evangelical counsels and a fourth vow to proclaim the gospel of life. They do not own anything. Their focus is prayer and apostolic service, although they work for survival. They strive to live as a family, where brothers serve brother, as Christ served the apostles when he washed their feet at the Last Supper. We follow the inspiration of St. Maximilian Kolbe and St. John Paul II, who upheld the sanctity of human life under the mantle of the Immaculate. We support every effort of the local church, always in obedience to the Pope and to the local ordinary. We also have an online presence. Our website not only features information about our emerging community and vocational material, but also resources and a link to the Liturgy of the Hours. Our friends can also keep in touch with us through our Facebook group, where we post events and interesting news. Our brothers do not individually spend time on the social media, but the fraternity itself, under the guidance of the superior, makes use of these means of communication to promote our apostolate and our way of life. We are a young fraternity, founded in 2009 by a professed Franciscan with the blessing of the local ordinary, and we sure hope to grow in numbers and in good deeds for life. Fraternity life is not only work and prayer, there are also times of recreation, such as a visit to the local Marian shrine with friends, or the experience of a local national holiday. For some brothers, this is a brand new and joyful experience that includes the savoring of new types of food. In the usage of technology, our constitutions are very clear. We avoid the spirit of consumerism, using a computer, cell phone, and other technology, only with permission, only for education and the apostolate, and only when it benefits the voiceless. The same, of course, applies to transportation. The brothers share a community vehicle, and they were so excited when our superior, after physical therapy, was able to drive again. We abide by a simple principle. A brother must do good and disappear. Sometimes, however, we are called to public events such as radio programs. On this occasion, we become the voice of the voiceless. When the feast of one of our patrons arrives, we make sure that everything is in place for a simple community celebration. Some brothers cook, others set up a little shrine. Everyone enjoys a peaceful and prayerful evening at the mother house. Yes, on such occasions we may even eat cake, an unusual treat in the life of a penitent. Such moments of consolation are treasured when we are called to go from Mount Tabor down to Jerusalem. There is so much to do in order to turn the culture of death into a culture of life, and the workers are so few. If only you could help us out. Our extern brothers are powerful models of Christian life. Fathers, husbands, employees, they commit through a solemn promise to proclaim the gospel of life, and they still find time to join the regular brothers for the occasional birthday party.
our poverty is no impediment to going on pilgrimage, especially when the Holy Father is in town. One of our most treasured moments was to travel from South Florida to Washington DC and Philadelphia, which meant days of driving and hours of walking and standing. But such joyful and spiritually edifying moments are forever ingrained in the history of the Franciscans of life. When October arrives, every Franciscan around the world prepares to celebrate the transitus of St. Francis, commemorating the time of his holy death. We do so too, in great simplicity. When our income is not enough, the brothers beg, as did the early Franciscans. On one occasion we received a variety of items from a number of donors, which we then sold for donations at a local flea market. The wardrobe of the regular brothers is very simple. Each brother learns to sew and patch their clothes and sandals with God's blessing, under the watchful eye of the superior. In 2015, the Archdiocese of Miami set aside an administrative office for Project Joseph, founded and directed by our superior. Everything in the office, from the furniture to the statues of St. Joseph and St. Francis and the cross of San Damiano, were donated by our kind benefactors within the month. God is so kind, and He always provides. Most of our work is hands-on, one-on-one with the voiceless. Occasionally, however, we are invited to attend large-scale pro-life events. On this occasion, the message we carry is often welcomed with joy. If only we had more brothers to reach many more ears and hearts. At times, the brothers are called to tackle crisis situations. We work in close collaboration with the local church in order to rise to the occasion and organize events that will uphold the beacon of life amidst a time of darkness in a loving effort to reach out to everyone. We do our part and we let our Lord do His. We may be a voice in the desert but when we walk with Christ, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. As the year comes to an end, the brother enters two little lands, the second one being the season of Advent. The Feast of Thanksgiving provides a beautiful occasion to remember everything the Lord has done for us and to pray in a special way for our friends and benefactors, as well as for vocations. We also take time to pray and meditate on the holy rule of penance and on the constitutions that we follow, so that we may be ever, ever faithful to the charism of the community and ever ready to meet the needs of the local church. Our brothers come from many different backgrounds and they are always glad to put their talents to use in any way that God may want. Christmas is the highlight of the year, as the brothers take time to decorate with austere joyfulness the mother house, both outdoors and indoors. It is a time of joy when the brothers set up the tree and especially the nativity scene a much-loved part of our Franciscan heritage. Of course, our novices are always excited to be able to stay up after night prayer to clean up the mess. It is also a time of peace and rest for those brothers who have spent long hours in the care of the terminally ill, and now, like those shepherds, can rest before the newborn king. There is nothing to fear when we serve the Mother of the Son, 
for he will only allow that which is good for her servants. Thank you for journeying with us in this year with the Franciscans of Life. Prayerfully consider whether God is inviting you to join us to build something beautiful for the Immaculate. We are the Franciscans of Life, simple men who wish to do little things with great love. Reach out to us to find out more.